All right, Mr. Pink, and we're going to continue with Barbarians today. Now, Barbarians are a one of the top frontliners for the 3.5 Player's Handbook edition. They are strong, they are fast, and they can rage. So why should you be one? Well, first off, if you like to plunder, pillage, and don't give a crap about the law, Barbarians are for you because guess what? You have to be non-lawful in order to be a barbarian. So there you go. Now, first and foremost, barbarians, they are not the smartest ones in the bunch, okay? They cannot read or write right off the bat. Now, granted, you can go and spend some skill points in order to be able to read and write, but who wants to do that, alright? Come on now. That there's no fun in that. Now, secondly, they can they have fast movement, which means as long as they are not having a heavy load, wearing heavy armor, they can move 10 feet faster than normal. So that means if you're a human, you have base land speed of 30, boom, automatically 40 foot. Now, let's get into the real reason why you would be a barbarian. Rage. Rage is the core thing for a barbarian. Because guess what? When you're in a rage, you get increased strength and constitution. Plus a bonus to will saves, but a negative to AC. And these bonuses are plus four, plus four, plus two, negative two, respectively. Now, you can only rage once per day at level one, plus you can only rage once per battle. So, yes. Use it wisely. Now, here's the kicker. Now, when you rage, you need not only get those bonuses, but the duration of it is 3 plus your new constitution modifier. And so, if you are going to be a barbarian, I would recommend having a high constitution because, hey, longer or higher constitution, longer rage. Also, more HP because, if, I, if you remember from one of my previous videos, it stacks retroactively. So, yeah. Now, the drawback to this is not that good. After you rage, you become fatigued, which means you get neg two to strength and dexterity, and you cannot charge or run. So, yeah, that's not exactly a good thing. But hey, let's go back on to negatives. When you're in rage, you can't use charisma, dexterity, or intelligence-based skills. So, yeah. The exceptions are, like, you know, balance, escape artist, intimidate, and ride. Because, come on now, even though you can't... If you're a hulking out, blood-stained eyes, staring down someone, you should be able to intimidate somebody doing that. Which, you know, that's just, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit up to the DM description if it's, you know, how your rage looks. But, anywho. You can't rage on your opponent's turn. You know, because, let's say, you know, you know that you're about to take a critical hit. You can't fly into a rage to, you know, maximize, to get the HP increase. Because that would just be unfair. Without peace. <clears throat> Sorry, I had uh, something in my throat. But as you progress, you get more rages. So level one, you get one. Then at level four, you get two, and then so on and so forth until level 20, you can rage six times a day. And all this, along with the duration and how many times you can rage, and the bonuses, and when you can rage, can all be modified by feats. Now, the next thing you get is Uncanny Dodge. What Uncanny Dodge does, it allows you to retain your dexterity bonus when you would normally lose it, aka flat-footed or struck by an invisible attacker. However, you can still lose it if you're immobilized. Next is Trap Sense, which honestly, I don't necessarily get why barbarians get Trap Sense. I guess it's because they spend so much time plundering towns and villages that they can, you know, 
since traps when they're near. But you get a plus one bonus to reflex haze against avoiding traps and a dodge bonus against attacks made by traps. And this goes up as you level up. Now the next one you get at level five is improved uncanny dodge. You can no longer be flanked. Basically, if you get an attack from both sides, <coughs> good luck to them. Now here is a very good one that if you can through other means, do it. And that is damage reduction. Because what damage reduction is, is exactly how it says. You get reduced damage, that's it. <laughs> Granted, there are certain ones that bypass this stuff, but you know, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get damage reduction. But it started off at, you know, with one damage reduction, and then, you know, you can increase it further by leveling up or by other feats, equipment, etc. So, look into that. Drawback is, which is not really a drawback, because I mean it'll be kind of redundant, is that damage reduction cannot go below zero, so you can't make it go like negative two and get healed by it. So yeah, the next one up is greater rage. What greater rage does? It increases the bonuses you get from raging. So instead of getting the plus fours, it is now a plus six. And instead of the plus two, it is now a plus three. Yeah, see, still remains at two, and all the other negatives are still in effect. Now, the next one is Indomitable Will. You get a plus four bonus on will save to resist enchantment spells. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I mean, yeah. The next one up is Indomitable Will. While in a rage, you get a plus four bonus on top of your other bonus against uh, enchantment spells, which I'm pretty sure is like charm person and stuff like that. So yeah, good to have. Next one that you get is at level 17 and it is tireless rage, which this is like the best thing ever for a rager. Especially if you don't rage, especially if you rage and the rage does not last throughout the whole encounter. This way you don't get those snags. Tireless Rage makes it to where you don't become fatigued at the end of the fight. Which is tremendous. And then the final one at level 20 is Mighty Rage. Now your bonuses go from 6 to 8. And your will save bonus goes from 3 to 4. Good news is... The rest of your negatives stay the same, but you're no longer fatigued. Now, let's go into the skills. Alright, there's skill points. At first level is 4 plus your intelligence modifier times 4 at level 1. So, and then, you know, obviously after that is 4 plus intelligence modifier per level. Now, the sk skills you get are as follows climb craft handle animal intimidate jump listen ride survival and swim a lot of good ones i'd have to say granted a couple of different ones i would like but still good now here's a little drawback if you become lawful by any means like someone you know does an alignment change on you or you know through character character development you can become an ex barbarian which will lose you to the ability to rage and you can no longer level up as a barbarian but you still get all the other bonuses which you know their whole their whole stick is you know raging so yeah be mindful of that and All right, and the next thing, which is actually something I probably should have started off with, is your hit die. Your hit die is a D12, the highest standard one you can have. 
And last but not least, weapon and armor proficiencies. They are proficient. Pre, blah, 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 blah. They are proficient with all simple and martial weapons, light armors, midi armors, and shields. But they cannot use tower shields. Not a whole lot of classes can. But on that note, I would have to say that this has been Mr. Pink. Which I am still thinking about a name change, and I, you know what? I will have the name change at the, at the end of these classes, and I will tell you why I am changing it to that. So, until then, this has been Mr. Pink. Goodbye.